okay um hello everyone i hope you can see uh, my screen well and i hope you can see my video well um a very good morning to all of you uh, this is manasi rakibe i'll give you all my quick introduction um unfortunately we are in a setup that where i get to talk and you all get to listen but that's okay um hopefully we will get to introduce each other some day later so i'll start with my introduction today uh, so i am going to cover the topic today is supply chain management and logistics management uh, i have total 6 to 7 years of work experience in the industry i my 6 years of work experience is purely purely manufacturing and automobile related work experience in manufacturing domain primarily uh, currently i'm working at procter procter and gamble as senior uh, media purchases manager i handle digital media purchases for all procter and gamble products coming back to my manufacturing and automobile sector uh, experience and background i am really passionate about this field and i have conducted a lot many seminars and a lot many lectures on these particular topics i have done my operations management from sibm and uh, that's the reason today i'm going to cover this topic which is very close to my heart and this is something i have implemented in while i was working at commence india limited uh, also while i was working at tata motors i come uh, with experience with these two companies and i'm very fortunate to be a part of these companies and these are very close to my heart cool so i hope we are ready to start i'm um, just one or two disclaimers that i want to give you all uh, today uh, the, as you know today's topic is very vast topic it is absolutely impossible to cover everything that that is there under supply chain management but then why we are discussing today uh, main intent of having this particular webinar is what are the important concepts in supply chain management uh, how these things are seen in the industry how things are expected from any person who is working in any industry not only in manufacturing but any sort of industry and how supply chain and logistics is applicable in that particular field what are the expectations from anyone who is working in this particular field my entire intent of putting these slides together and giving this session to you all is to help you in some or other way to understand nitty gritties of these domains to understand how the industry is looking at this particular domain and what are the expectations and i i would strive my level best to live up to your expectations as well we can go to next slide okay so i'm not sure so those who have attended my webinar in the last week they know i always start with the quote so today i'm going to start with the quote by albert einstein strive not to be a success but rather to be a value we always tend to define what is our success criteria in any field and the success criteria is usually delivering the right product to delivering the product to consumer or the uh, making our product available in the market right and which we more or less every industry does be it service be it pro any product manufacturing industry but uh, how then well, how this success is then different than the value and that is something we are going to see today if the product is delivered at the right cost at the right time and if uh, we are able to maintain our customer satisfaction then we are creating value in the industry and that is the reason i genuinely wanted to start with this quote because the entire supply, having supply chain management in place is nothing but we are striving to create the value let's go to the next slide okay and then comes the bombardment of uh, quotes and trust me this is the last one so this quote is very important i always include this in my slides because what steve jobs is talking about that the most favorite things in his life those are actually not costing him anything because the most precious thing that we all have is time now i have taken out this one hour for you all to help you guys in some or other way to help you guys to understand what are the important concepts in supply chain management and logistics management my request to you is take this one hour for yourself i am i can bet on it that this is going to help you please put all your mobile phones electronic gadgets aside i'm also putting my own cell phone currently on on flight mode because i don't want any disturbance and i hope you also respect your own time and my time as well let's go to next slide 
Okay, so what is the objective for next 40 minutes? I always start with this and uh, it is very important for us to understand, to know what all we are going to talk. So one, naturally we are going to understand what is um, the next, uh, yeah. So we are going to understand what is the supply chain management? What is the role of inventory management in supply chain? What is logistics uh, management in supply chain? And overall, how the success looks like in, in general in supply chain. Okay, so why I'm talking about inventory and why I'm talking about logistics? Because I'll, you will come to know very soon about it. But the most important point you need to understand is supply chain is empty without having inventory management and without having logistics management. Okay, so now let's do a quick reality check. Where, where are we today? What is the situation around us today? So we are in a COVID-19 situation. We are actually realizing the impact of COVID-19 in, in India and overall in, on the industry. So there are various fields those have got affected due to COVID-19 and the kind of things we hear usually from each other, from friends, from colleagues is industry is facing a slack and we put a direct correlation of that to losing the jobs, which I believe, I strongly believe is not the true scenario. Many of you may may, uh, may not align with me or may, uh, may differ with this particular statement, but just hear me out, right? So we are in a situation which is, ad, which is as bad as the World War II after effects. In many reports I have come across that they have described that this is the exact situation and exact downfall of the economy that the world has faced at the time of World War II and at the time of the Great Recession, which is 2008-2009 period, right? What did our, what did our um, seniors do? What did uh, what, what all people do when they were facing all these troubles during World War II or, or the Great Recession 2008? They, they took efforts. They put right strategy. They put right processes and they put right in. They did they, they few inventions in such a way that their existing problem got resolved at the same time their overall quality of their production got improved. The fantastic example about this is the to Toyota production system, right? And what I'm trying to say is we are in need of another Tai Chi Ono, who is the master and the brain of this entire system, this entire quality system. Those who is learning operations management, you all must know everything, every bit of Toyota production system. It may talk about a particular bit of manufacturing or production, but trust me, the thought process is something you can apply anywhere. If, if, even if you are in HR domain, you can still apply the thought process. Not exactly the, you know, physically you will not have products, but the thoughts you can definitely reapply. So in a nutshell, I think we should, we definitely should look at the situation as the greatest opportunity that has got created because industry is looking for the talent who is going to help businesses to come out of this situation. And it's only us who can help the industry if we have the right knowledge in the right domain. In any manufacturing industry, knowledge about operations management, quality, knowledge about this entire effective production system, knowledge about minimizing the losses, is very very much needed right now because we are already into the loss and we cannot really afford to produce any particular product which consists of multiple losses at multiple junctions like supply chain like be it at the inventory level be it at the warehouse level or be it at the logistics level so i hope now you are able to understand why we are talking today i hope you are able to understand why it is so much important to understand where we are today like the covid 19 situation and the impact on your respective industry and what is needed even if you have job today so i'm considering today everybody's overall number of years of experience as like average five years of experience so that means you're already working right many of you majority of you even if you are in your existing jobs you must have seen that they, they are calling people to work at 10 percent 20 percent capacity it is up to you that how you are going to define and showcase to the management that you are an important resource they cannot afford to lose you because you are going to help the organization in such a way that nobody else can right and everybody got to choose their own field of interest and just master in that field so i'm going to help you all today what uh, what all things and facts lie in supply chain management and see if that interests you you can go for then further uh, detailed learning on this particular field and then you can choose where to become a master 
okay let's go to the next slide so this is just a visual representation that i have put together i usually do that i try to simplify the uh, overall concept and so that it will help you also to understand where this is exactly placed because see the textbook definitions are anyways available right i'm not going to talk a lot about that i'm going to tell you that where exactly in the industry the supply chain management or the logistics fits so where it fits is for to create any particular product you need the raw material the basic infrastructure right and the product manufacturing starts and then you deliver that product to your customer so the block that is highlighted in the dotted red circle is nothing but talking about where the supply chain and logistics circle and network lies let's go to the next slide so this slide which just we showed right and you should refer that slide and you just you should always remember that slide because that one particular flow diagram is equal to complete operations management that we do in the industry now let's let's look at the definition of supply chain management there are multiple definitions of supply chain management and i have chosen a one which covers the important key highlights that 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 is what the supply chain is right so just to start on a note uh, to cover everything and just to cover uh, just to ensure that we are covering everything supply chain management is the set of activity that any organization performs and uh, to efficiently integrate the supplies one very important manufacturers the warehouses the stores that we have internally or externally so that the this overall the over uh, this entire process helps to produce a product or any merchandise and it is getting distributed at the right quantities to the right location and at the right time so this is something is the most important chunk i have highlighted in blue right why and what is the intent of having this entire system in place is to minimize system wide costs and satisfying the service level of require, uh, requirements those are from our customers right in any what the in any uh, situation in operations management the intent is always to reduce the cost required to deliver a product be it service be it actual product be it actual manufacturing be it anything be it it industry also be it any website if you are making any particular website what is your intent you should, you your intent is to make that website in the minimal possible cost and that's what this entire definition is talking about now while making the website your supply chain may look like very different than what i have plotted here this supply chain is mainly talking about a manufacturing industry operations but as i said earlier you can replicate this for any type of industry because without supply chain and logistics it's just an incomplete process right and now what what this slide talks about is what is the flow right your raw material comes to your plant so you flow of your raw material from your supplier side to your own side your internal flow of the material right from your probably inventory store through to your production line this is also one of the transit uh, through, uh, through which the material goes end product uh, manufacturer so if 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 at all we are talking about any manufacturer when the end product is manufactured how the product flows into the system this all we are going to see in much much detail so i'll not spend more time on this slide so let's go to the next slide super so i really like this slide because this slide covers the crux of supply chain management most important milestone in supply chain management are highlighted in this circles materials planning without planning so i hope if any of you have attended the last seminar uh, you will recollect that this is something i have covered in operations management also strategy the forecasting are the most important pillars of operations management and in this and now supply chain management is nothing is a major major integral part of overall operations management there are few courses they they have now changed the name to not only to operations management operations and supply chain management because these two things go hand in hand right so materials planning is something the planning phase is really important because if your forecast is not right if your planning is not right what you are going to do you are going to end up buying more raw material or you are going to end up not buying the required raw material right and it involves 
um, uh, risk either of the sides procurement and integration so procurement of it it could be anything procurement of uh, the raw material is the basic direct indirect procurement are the two types sometimes you procure services sometimes you procure the actual raw material the parts and the goods required to make your final product warehouse and fulfillment warehouse is the again i am going to cover this uh, ahead but it is again the most important point right distribution now under distribution distribution basically in, uh, talks more about the logistics part of the supply chain management and repairs and returns this is the space where nobody wants to be repairs and returns is something that we all must target and avoid right but that that particular uh, roadblock is still there because that is the fact right in order to um, eliminate the repairs and returns completely six sigma process is the solution for that and a lot many industries are moving towards it a lot many industries are already hiring six sigma experts so that the last part which talks about repairs and returns is they can eliminate it completely at least it should be so small so negligible that it does not have any impact on the overall profit of that particular industry right so coming back to supply chain management this is not the only you know blog and this is not the process that once the planning is done procurement it's not a linear process it's a if you can see the arrows it's a circular process right every block has full potential to impact the operations of the next block or the previous block that we are going to cover in the coming slides most important thing that i want you all to focus upon is the flow of material or value which i have indicated in this particular slide if you see the forward flow is indicated in the green arrows most important thing that you all should remember that the value added services flow is always going towards the consumer material flow is always going towards the consumer but the flow when the material is delivered to the customer and if there are going to be some sort of returns then the flow is exactly reverse flow which is the um, returns flow and what another thing that comes uh, in return to the manufacturer imagine if we are a water bottle manufacturer let's let's take this example and around this example i'm going to explain a lot many concepts to you so we are manufacturing water bottles today while i'm manufacturing water bottles my and that particular product has gone through entire supply chain now it is delivered to the consumer but if consumer decides to return that particular product then it comes in the reverse manner agreed what else happens so if uh, the product is delivered i understand my sales executive understands that a, in a particular zone in a particular state or country this brand man this brand water bottles are most in demand and somewhere at some other region there is least demand there is almost zero demand right so regionally you come to know about what the demand is there is a specific unit which is in place to communicate the demand to the supply chain overall uh, block that any industry has there is a reason to it because if we are not aware of the demand which is available which is there in the market we would either over produce the goods up at the very probably the demand is very less but we we will end up over producing the goods or we will end up not meeting the demand so one to understand what should be the ideal speed of our production two to understand what should be that right quantity that of raw material that i need to stock up to meet my demand to meet my production requirements third thing how much to produce it is still okay to have sometimes we have extra stock in our inventory but we decide not to produce this may this also happens because there are sudden spikes in the demands positive spike and negative spike just like the way we are in the situation right covid 19 situation take any examples a uh, water bottle so yes there is spike in few areas where people are believing that you know just to maintain our immunity well we want to order water which is refined water and hence they are ordering water bottles but there is a particular region where tourism tra tra travel and tourism is a completely zero and hence the demand has gone dramatically down right take any other commodity example in such situation the manufacturers are taking a decision to hold their production it is still okay to have that inventory but absolutely not okay to 
make losses by manufacturing the product and then keeping it into the inventory right the losses are much higher this and that's why the and my focus on the demand flow is a lot because there are experts in the industry those are specialized in understanding and analyzing the demand from the market there is a forecast team that is available in the market the forecast team first of all helps to uh, understand what is the demand supply ratio what all what all raw material is needed basis demand the forecast sheet is prepared and according to that the inventory is managed according to that the logistics provisions are made according to our demand analysis our entire sub supply chain decides their own strategy of working and the information flow information flow is either ways what we just spoke about is basically understanding the information bas basically gathering the information one should gather the right information which is required for the supply chain domain of your particular organization right and this is where i see a lot many opportunities currently in the industry because this is the most critical area industry do not want to invest any even a single penny which is not which is higher than what it is expected right this completely depends on demand supply analysis this could be a field if this interests you you should go ahead and look into this field let's go to next slide Super. So this is something I have put together uh, for you all. Um, I'm not sure if you will find this anywhere uh, online because this is I have created. Um, I always like to see anything and everything that is included in a particular subject or a topic, right? So in the last seminar, we covered what what all what all milestones we have when it comes to operations management. Today we are going to talk about what all milestones or the important domains we have when it comes to supply chain management. A lot many things we covered in the previous slide, but still I'll go through it. So material planning we saw, procurement and integration, warehouse, inventory management. I have called it out as a as different block because any ups and downs in the inventory now and in any any uh, any ups and downs in inventory strategy will actually lead to losses distribution now distribution and logistics so distribution also consists of overall distribution networks modes of distribution i am calling out logistics as a separate milestone because logistics come with a lot many challenges there are different types of logistics that a particular so a particular manufacturer prefers depending upon the commodity depending on if it is a service domain then the complete logistics chain and the cycle looks very different most important thing that we need to focus on in on logistics is any change in logistics or any uh, wrong strategy that put together while executing the logistics is directly impacting your profit just like inventory management and that's the reason i'm going to talk about these two blocks today and uh, the in the respective areas what are the important facts and terminologies that one should be aware of that one should actually should be knowledgeable knowledgeable about i have covered all these points just below each of the milestone in this entire process right so let to to simplify this overall supply chain management process first comes the planning basis the forecast basis what the entire end to end planning if i am going to produce a certain number of products for that how much raw material is required how much buffer i need to keep what all the services i am going to need throughout this process forecasting all of this and making a right plan with the help of project management experts is considered under planning now very specific to material planning there is mrp which is material requirement planning which is done in industry this is the most important field i'm not going to talk very much in detail because the knowledge about it is widely available in any course or online also you can take more knowledge about it now procurement and integration the most important thing erp enterprise resource planning enterprise resource planning is the i you can say it's the technology and the tool available out there in the market to integrate demands of each of your inter internal functions to have a plat to have a common platform where the portfolio of all the services or product or raw material requirements listed on a common platform and it is created for a particular industry 
basis their own requirements this is overall called as enterprise resource planning i have simplified it very much but it also comes with the uh, benefits it also also comes with the corresponding risks and you one must go through it one one who is working in supply chain management must know everything about the erp system there are different different erps um services uh, erps provided by a different different um, industries dif uh, at different products are available um, every manufacturing unit choose to decide any of it so i think uh, there are many available so there is a product by cisco there is a product uh, by many uh, many de developers and uh, it's completely up to you what is the scale of, of your industry and whether it is required or not required because it's an investment right please note this down right any any use of technology is very much recommended when you are into a supply chain management and if you want effective supply chain management use of technology technological integration digitization automation is very much recommended definitely because we want to minimize errors but at the same time you need to understand how much it is going to cost you because this is also important factor because if you invest everything in your supply chain management then what profit are you going to make right so you got to find your ways to make your supply chain effective it could be by hiring talented people you can still make the supply chain very effective have with with, have, with minimal uh, softwares available that is also possible it completely depends on the scale of the industry you are in then comes warehouse management right warehouse management is very important to know because warehouse is something you you may have created very closer to your own industry you you need to know what all the warehouse facilities you are going to avail at the while you are dispatching your material to the consumer or in case of there is any return then how, what how you are going to avail this particular facility because this comes with the cost in warehouse management also if you are very if you are in an industry which only does warehouse management oh my god then this is the milestone for you then you forget about everything else you just focus on this particular milestone because then you need to know what is how the layouting is done how the racks are managed what are what are the typical measurements of the racks what are the typical racks those are available wide in the market what are the different requirements of the warehouse if you are specialized in providing service to perishable goods then the warehouse requirements are altogether different see i as you i hope you understand as i am covering each of the milestone i hope you understand the depth of it it is not a simple process that you say okay supply chain management and here is the definition this consists of material planning la 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 la, la procurement warehouse logistics and ये इम्पॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स आ गए इसका मतलब यू नो दी सप्लाई चेन इट्स एब्सोल्यूटली नॉट दैट सिंपल थिंग राइट एवरी माइल स्टोन हैज ट्रिमेंडस डेप्थ देर इज अ लॉट टू लर्न ऑन ईच एंड एवरी माइल स्टोन एंड हेंस आई अर्ज यू टू सिलेक्ट योर ओन एक्सपर्टीज डोमेन एनी थिंग दैट इंटरेस्ट यू टेक एफर्ट्स टू बी मास्टर इन दैट if anyone is very much interested in warehouse domain anyone is very much interested in starting their own business to provide warehouse services to all these big manufacturers absolutely yes you can completely go for it but then there are few things that you must know right the storage strategy is something that that should be at the top of your mind and that is something you must know now coming to inventory management now what i'll do is i'll quickly go to inventory management anyways in the following slides as well and uh, we will cover everything that is listed there the i am covering the highlights of inventory man management today and then we will go to logistics right next slide next slide please yeah so before just going into inventory management i'll just quickly tell you also this is a pictorial representation of how the interactions happens in supply chain management if we follow the linear flow it is never going to work right supply in supply chain management all departments in some or other way tend to interact with each other and this is the diagram where i have see, i have shown all the interaction those usually happens in any supply chain management domain of any industry there are few essential features uh, and the most important feature i feel is the communication 
to have a integrated behavior within the teams those who are working under supply chain it does not happen it does not work if logistics team says that okay we are logistics we are not going to interact with the inventory team or we are not going to interact with the production team every entire system is going to collapse you very well need the communication that's the reason the flow the arrows that i have shown in the previous slides are important because it is very much important to keep the information flowing from start to end end to start to either ways right mutually sharing information i just covered that mutually sharing channel risk and rewards yeah this is very important because if a particular small a subset of your supply chain is at risk then we need to balance it with some other domain so for example uh, let's say uh, our logistics uh, is at risk then what what then in a reverse manner we get to understand okay if logistics uh, domain is not working and there are certain risk that we are seeing road blockage sudden things that happen in the, uh, in our environment today there are road blockages there are let's say riots it could be anything right the heavy rainfall the roads are blocked so in so one first thing that you do is you change you try and change your logistic strategy you try and change the combination but the next at the same time you in, indicate this entire risk to all your internal departments that okay we are not going to the market might as well slow down the production or might as well sometimes if it is going to be a huge impact might as well stop the production these are very very crucial decisions those are taken just based on the information that your logistics team is going to share with the internal corresponding teams focus on serving customers right focus not only the company it's not, it's not just that the ceo cfos and coos of the company are very much uh, caring about uh, our customer satisfaction or serving uh, the our customers in the right manner at the right time no it's it's the responsibility of each individual see i you know i am not going to talk a lot i'm talking a lot of theory because this topic is really important but try and understand having this domain knowledge having this sense of responsibility with you your own like you just have to think that if i am given a particular task for how long it is going to sit on my table if i am if efficient today i can straight away extrapolate all the points and say my company is efficient today it starts with you if you do not have a right approach then you are attracting all the troubles from the industry to yourself if you are not you if you do not have right values which the quote i covered at the start if you do not have right values and if you do not have right intent then the risk of losing the job you are definitely attracting that the risk of not developing in the job you are definitely attracting that the risk of not having a great career path ahead you are definitely attracting that if you know for a fact that you are delivering your 100% it's it just i just equate it to happiness i just equate it, it to work life balance and the satisfaction and once you have satisfaction everything else falls into the place you really don't have to worry about where the environment is going where the industry is going because if we are not there if people like us with great intent and great dedication if people like us are not there anyway industry is not going to work right so i don't I, so i don't see there is any worry about then jobs and losing jobs for those who are looking for jobs if you have great intent and if you are very dedicated to your own career and if you are very passionate about the work you are expert in industry spots that not probably in the one go not probably in the second go not probably in the third also but probably at the fifth go somebody somewhere will will spot that because trust me there are less people in the industry those come with great values great dedication and passion towards work next slide please so i'm just calling out risk of overall supply chain i'll focus on two first risk lie with the inventory and second risk lie with the logistics and hence we are going to talk about that it, you are anyways going to get the presentation so you can go through this uh, all the risk those are listed because it's important that you know all the risks next slide please okay so again what are the objectives of supply chain management i think we have very well covered i have covered this through while i was explaining you all the uh, important milestones in the supply chain so we can go to next slide 
yeah now let's come to the inventory so why at the first place we need inventory it's so simple right just the way like uh if we are in need of sugar if we are making tea we just go downstairs and uh, get the sugar or we just order sugar on swiggy or danzo why can't we do the same like why can't we do so to tell you frankly even my mother so i learned inventory from my mother so what she does is she makes a list of items that she is going to need for uh, let's say three months of period she, she makes a list goes one day stocks everything up and we are sorted for the next three months this is something i learned starting my childhood and this is something i see in the industry as well but there is a slight difference in stocking up and having inventory and managing this particular inventory right now it is very very much dependent upon the demand that is there in the market shorter product life cycle is something that we call is uh, any item that is in our inventory or that is in our product production line our intent is to get rid of that item as soon as possible get rid of that does not mean putting it in the scrap but actually sending that item to the next uh, uh, milestone which is our logistics and then uh, ma making sure that it reaches the consumer right now why inventory is needed because there are some times when there are uncertainty in the supplies so you cannot really predict what risk can come in your backward supply chain which is like uh, you and behind which means the your supplier their supply supplier and the logistics and the warehouses in between so this is called as the backward supply chain you can say or um, and in that particular uh, chain you cannot really predict what sort of um, losses stoppages can come into the picture so to um, eliminate that risk we tend to have the inventory space in our organization or in our manufacturing plant right and that's why it is needed so we are convinced that we need inventory now let's focus on why this is a pain point and why we need experts from inventory management why do we need people those who know the nitty gritties of it and those who are very much expert in managing this inventory let's go to the next slide yeah what are the types of inventory we all know raw material and purchase part is the main thing that we everybody is aware of uh, partially completed goods right this is something we we actually want to discourage so work in progress goods so ideally what what the experts say that this particular piece which is work in progress items should not exist in any organization why because they say that your process should be so tight and you should be aware of your process in in such a detail that you know that from from junction a to b the you know the transit of your raw material till the time we make the final go final finished good out of it you should know it in such a detail that there should not be any waiting time zero waiting time between the junctions and when there is zero waiting time between the junctions the work in progress product the need of putting this product work in progress product in a shelf the need of having the shelf somewhere in between the junctions is completely eliminated so this is the ideal situation we want to be in but yeah sometimes there are partially produced goods available uh, with us in our inventory domain finished goods again this also we want to eliminate so ideal situation is we know the demand we are producing exact same amount and we are delivering that amount with no delay with no stoppages and with no like so they so our logistics should be so efficient that the moment our goods are produced they are immediately shipped to the right location again this is a ideal stage we have experts in the industry those are working and those are putting a lot of effort to achieve this ideal state but this is what is expected replacement of parts and the tools and the supplies so again so we receive the material we do the quality check and the raw material we understand okay in a batch of 100 there are like 5 or 10 those are not as per requirement and these are returns so we need to give this back to the supplier again we need a another different space allocated for this particular in, uh, inventory which is a return sort of inventory again we want to avoid this so you know this is very important point 
I'm just connecting the dots and I'm just trying to tell you how these, how the internal sub domains interact with each other, right? So now this is a feedback that the inventory department or the quality check expert who is checking the material or raw material should give to the purchasing department so that we make sure and or we may add a particular clause which says that if the percentage of faulty goods is more than a certain let's say it's more than one percent then you are going you are going to pay the penalty it could be anything right but at least we can take some corrective action and we can also take a preventive action so that we do not land up in a situation where we have to manage the inventory which is only the replacements or which is the only the faulty parts that we receive from the uh, consumer uh, so, sorry from the supplier same is the case when we, re, uh, re, uh, we receive the parts from our consumer, uh, the returns, the faulty products, right? We want to avoid both of these. So the first part about this uh, wrong raw material that we receive from the supplier, it is very much important that our internal domains interact with each other. Most important point is, so that's the reason purchases and the organization have their vision, they have their quality requirements and measure set in place so that they associate only with such type of suppliers. Those are equivalent in maintaining the right quality, right? Uh, and the goods in transit, basically the warehouses. So this is overall what sort of inventory we have. Let's go to the next slide. Superb. So these are the what are the functions of the inventory to meet the demand and everything we have covered all this. Let's uh, inventory turnover is something the cost of goods sold, the final goods that we sold to the average inventory investment. Imagine what, when when we say we have pathetic inventory turnover ratio. What does it mean? The denominator is so low that the overall turn uh, sorry the, sorry the denominator is so high the turnover is extremely low. So basically cost of good that we actually sell should be very, very, very high. And the amount that we invest for our inventory should be very, very low. So that should be the ideal situation, right? Next slide. Yeah, so these are, there are few techniques that the in, in, in those are widely followed in the industry to do effective inventory management. ABC classification is widely known, but not very much used these days because these days we are looking ahead for digitization, digitization of the entire space. But still, it is extremely important to know that we are taking decision basis. What are our A type uh, raw material or the uh, product goods we are storing in the inventory? What are the B type and what are the C type? And basis which we decide the right quantity and the right allocation of the space while doing inventory management. Next slide. Yeah, so this is the most important concept and a jargon in industry, which is economic order quantity. One should know that what is that what is that one number which is going to be effective in what is that inventory number that I should maintain so that it gives me cost effectiveness and which is also the quantity which is very much required to to make sure my production is up and running to make sure I'm meeting if at all there is any positive spike sudden high demand then also I'm meeting my demand and if there is any sudden low demand then also I have such such number of inventory that I'm not at much risk see invent having inventory involves the availability of space availability of resources to maintain that inventory if while any particular raw material or the product is there in the inventory section and there the product is getting damaged or there the raw material is getting damaged like rusting this is the worst loss guys so this is the worst place to be in no service domain or no manufacturing domain wants to be in a space where their inventory is getting damaged just by the wrong practices of storing the inventory this is extremely important for the perishable items. For perishable items, the inventory requirements are in such a way that the manufacturing industry or, or the, uh, the inventory spaces have to make, have to have very special conditioned inventory spaces, right? The warehouses, we can say. So it is really important how much you're going to invest in your infrastructure and how, how you're going to take care of the infrastructure. So to avoid the losses at the time of storing the inventory. Next slide. 
what is logistics management so we have covered everything important which is related to inventory management let's come to the logistics management logistics is basically art and science of obtaining producing distributing the product in a at proper place at proper time in proper quantities if any of this is going wrong it is directly going to affect either our internal process or it is going to affect our customer right or basically customer satisfaction logistics is the most integral part of supply chain management a lot many people get confused about uh, whether it is logistics whether to call uh, the transport of material as a logistics or a supply chain please make it very clear in your mind that supply chain management is the whole domain in that logistics management is a subset which is definitely the most important subset of supply chain management this logistics is based, primarily focuses on planning implementation and control of the entire transit of goods let's go to next slide seven hours of logistics i i like this slide very much because this in a glance uh, you can actually see what logistics means we want to we want to deliver the right product in the right quantity in the right condition this is most important we see we have seen examples of this there are uh, uh, there are a lot many uh, service industries available in out there in the market and the right condition is of more utmost importance right place Right, at the right time to the right customer and at the right price right this is the crux of logistics these seven hours if you know all these seven hours you know the entire logistics you can you cannot go wrong at any point of time because you know what are the seven important factors when it comes to logistics next slide yeah so we will go in little bit little bit of detail uh, with respect to each and every pillar i'm so sorry we are running behind time a little bit but i hope you all are okay to extend by like just 5 to 10 minutes it would be really great uh, and i hope this session is going well i hope it is engaging um, i'm so sorry i cannot interact but i'm i hope you are enjoying and i hope you are taking notes about it now uh, the important uh, sections in logistics management important functions the pillars are transportation warehousing uh, third party and four party logistics reverse logistics so we are today going to focus uh, we are going to talk a little bit about all four of these also you are going to get this slide so i have listed the important highlights of each of them right so reverse logistics is pretty much simple which is primarily handling the returns reuse recycling because there are nowadays packaging material is recyclable uh, you see a notice there that this is recyclable material please return if you have plenty of this if you like you can definitely the ex packets that come you can definitely return those ex packets for recycling likewise a uh, most important pillar of logistics is the transportation right there are modes of transportation each mode of transportation has their own rules there are government stated rules that one who one should know whosoever is there in the transportation part of logistics of course not, uh, needless to say this is the most important part of logistics management um we so what happens is whenever we want to transport a particular material from point a to point b it, it is not a compulsion that we use only road transport or only uh, air transport our logistics strategy is a very much important because there we decide that considering the location where we want to deliver the good considering that particular lo location what is the most effective what is the most effective way of transporting our material it could be combination of two three modes of transportation warehousing we spoke a lot about it warehousing is nothing but during the transit if we have to change whenever we want to change the mode of transport or if we want to change the route uh, to a different route or usually warehouses are considered as in transit uh, storage places from where are either the retailers collect the material or the distribution plan changes or the material then get distributed in different different places 
third party fourth party logistics is nothing but the service provider here we are going to talk about what are the different service providers are available in the market for uh, doing the for executing the logistics bit so third party is something it's a, from our own manufacturing unit we are choosing a particular third party we are telling them that okay this is going to be the route we are telling them this is going to be the mode of transport and please transport this material to b location from here to the expected location but what is different in fourth party logistics is we just give the material we just tell them that from here from point a to point b we want to transport this material and we pay a certain amount to deliver to give this service to the fourth party logistics what they do is they make a strategy for us they prepare a plan for us they select the right warehouses then of course as we are relying on them for this particular service any risk in this entire transport is then then shared or completely owned by the fourth party logistic and there are a lot many services available in the market if any of you are planning to start your business in purely purely fourth party logistic service it's a great domain to be in never ending there is no end to this particular domain there are a lot many opportunities you can actually make your own uh, make your own business to provide service to big big manufacturing organization just to take care of the, their entire logistics network and we reverse logistics is something we spoke about next slide super so this is a value proposition that one should always know that there should be a right balance in the service and the cost that you are paying for the service because see you cannot compromise in service because that is going to affect your customer satisfaction at the same time you cannot pay enormous amount to get that service because it's ultimately your investment right your investment should not be higher than what profit you make you will be in negative zone see understanding of business terminologies and correlating each and every loss to the pro the to the impact that that this is going to cost on the profit is very important it is very important to have frequent interactions with the great managers it is important to have interactions with the leaders of your company leaders of your industry it gives you perspective it helps you understand how this industry works it helps you understand main kaam to kar rahi hu supply chain management mein but mere se expectation kya hai how i am contributing to companies goodwill how i am contributing in companies overall profit it is very important to know this if you don't know this or if you are not impacting or doing any value addition in companies well being or in companies profit then create that value for yourself be expert in any of these domains because it is very important that whatever work you do whatever efforts you put in you should be able to impact in a positive way for the organization uh, organization's profit or the well being or the right practices that is getting followed next in next slide this is in a glance that what are the goals and what are the strategies getting followed in logistics as i said it is very important to understand goals be it your personal life be it your professional life and be it your business like you need goals so uh, most important goal is customer satisfaction and we already have seen the seven r's so it is very much related to that quality is of utmost important quality get, there is high high potential that the quality is getting impacted at any stage of logistics because because of poor handling because of poor attention because of poor packaging because of poor mode of transport so uh, because of compromising the quality of the vehicle that is utilized to transport any perishable item just to save on the cost of transport if instead of transporting that in a temperature controlled vehicle if we transport that in any normal vehicle what is going to happen you are going the it is going to impact the quality of your product it will invite unnecessary uh, uh, devaluation of your brand image devaluation of your brand equity devaluation of uh, reduction of faith consumer will not have faith any more on your service or on your product now to avoid that zone what are the strategies is basically listed there so let's go to the next slide 
yeah so effective logistic one of the effective logistic strategy i'm going to focus upon is use of information but at the start as i said as i told you all that it is very important to know to what extent i'm going to invest in the information technology or in automation right there are various ways in which we can use information so one is improvement of communication what you can do is you can establish a channel where all your internal departments or the logistics ke andar hi everybody gets to talk so warehouse gets to talk with the any mode of transport that is happening your reverse or uh, return logistics get to talk with the again with the warehouse or with the starting point at the communication should be established collaborate with suppliers it is not always see if everybody now i'm sit, i'm currently situated in mumbai you know what is the what is the most precious thing in mumbai is space the jagah like the space that is uh, available for your own business we are facing a lot of crunch of spaces now imagine if we decide that each manufacturer will have their own space will have their own warehouses every supplier will have their own thing is it humanly possible will they be able to then stay in the heart of the city and then um, uh, and then have their own uh, warehouse their own inventory spaces their own uh, logistics department spaces everything their vehicle spaces no not at all it is not possible right so what you what you get to do here you get to collaborate with your suppliers in such a way that you integrate your strategies you integrate your processes in such a way, in such a way that you are very much focusing on your continuous improvement at the same time you are sharing you are sharing the observations uh, of the trends you are sharing the observations on the demand you are taking very important strategic decisions like making the warehouses common or making making the log logistic services common which will help us both so imagine a supplier and a manufacturer have tie up with a logistic service then the see, see the service from supplier to uh, then the manufacturer is completely sorted right you see efficiency is there keep inventory in transit again um, allocating a lot more space than required uh, for just to store your inventory is absolutely a very wrong technique and tactic which we already have seen so keeping this inventory more in transit is very much um, recommended from the experts for obvious reasons because it reduces a lot of cost it reduces a lot of investment needed uh, sh uh, mix shipments that that we already saw that mix the shipments needs in such a way that the effective logistics cost is very minimal and don't wait uh, um, in the line at cust uh, customs right so you need to know that what all documentation is needed you need to know the changing government laws you need to know the changing government norms to do's and don'ts list list that is widely available so this is also one of the area where you can be expert and you can contribute from your end that you can assure to the manufacturer or the industry that if this responsibility is given to me i'm going to keep the information so much up to date that my any product in transit or any product that is about to get shipped is adhering to all the requirements is going uh, going ahead with all the necessary documentation so that the it is there is no time uh, wasted or no cost given to this so you know, i hope you know in customs also if your material is there uh, present there more than 24 hours and if you are not providing the required documents or clearance is not done then they start charging you per hour basis or per day basis right it depends on the size of your material and what is ultimately happening you are losing money so now you understand the Uh, warehousing strategy your logistic strategy and your inventory strategy should go hand in hand all these uh, norms should be known to each of the expert of that particular domain there has to be a constant interaction happening flow of information happening throughout the supply chain next slide yeah so pooling risk is something that we spoke about what it calls it this is again very great strategy that is widely implemented in the industry what it does is basically it reduces the storage cost and it reduces the uh, reduces the stock outs so what happens is uh, just give me a minute right so it reduces the stock outs uh, completely available in the industry 
and what what is does basically is you you send, you put the material at the centralized location and uh, this is the tie ups that is done with similar uh, uh, other manufacturer those are manufacturing similar sort of product or mostly this is done by the retailers because whenever there is high demand they just want to order this material from the warehouse so what they do is they end up sharing the warehouse so that they are at profit next slide please yeah uh, so as i told you all earlier that a lot many of us get confused between logistics management and supply chain management i hope i am i was able to tell you all that how different it is from each other and how logistics is in integral part of supply chain management these are the few points i have listed for you all just to take a look at how what is the difference between logistics and supply chain management right next slide yeah again this talks about mainly about the processes next slide yeah so again um, so thank you thank you so much everyone for attending this particular webinar i request you all to please share your questions please uh, be there on call till the time i answer the questions i hope this session was useful for you all i am looking forward to see you all in the upcoming sessions any questions related to career i would spend last 2 minutes to talking about uh, my experience in the supply chain domain and logistics and in the industry so there were instances when you actually have to take a very quick call while you are ordering ordering a certain material while you are storing a certain material so i'll give you example of reverse logistics sort of a thing there was one calibration equipment in our test cell which uh, uh, for which we we were facing some issue in in terms of measurement now who provided the service of calibration our vendor right and the vendor is situated at a particular distance this uh, this uh, i so first thing that i did is calculation of the losses this was saturday saturday was my weekly off uh, there are two other people those are very much dedicated to the calibration management of the equipment so one thing then the for most important thing step one that we did is identifying what is the problem second thing is if uh, asking ourselves if we can correct this if we can if we can calibrate this in, uh, its instrument internally and if we can fix this so that our test cell starts running Uh, those of those uh, 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 those who understand or those who work in the test cell sort of a testing facility environment they understand how much big are the losses when your test cell is idle idle for 1 hour or 2 hours right now here we were talking about i uh, test cell will be idle for saturday and sunday because it's a weekly off one question i asked myself if i don't support today even this even if this is my weekly off if i don't support today if i don't take decision today what is the loss loss is keeping the test cell idle for two complete days in all the three shifts absolutely i am not going to take that loss on my head the equipment is calibrated i have delivered what i was supposed to deliver my responsibility is to keep everything calibrated in the test cell which i have done but still there is a problem next question i asked who is that one person is going to help me get this instrument calibrated from the vendor if i want to dismantle it and send it to the calibration uh, center to the vendor the answer is logistics my logistics partner the importance of maintaining relationship everyone in the industry is so important the way i shared my uh, interpersonal relation with the logistics vendor that vendor vendor accepted my last minute request they accepted my request we they uh, they accepted my request of doing the documentation as quickly as possible i ensured i'm doing the internal documentation as quickly as possible saturday afternoon 3 pm the equipment was dispatched to the vendor location who provides calibration services and guess what it is weekly off for the vendor also and you know what when i realized that i realized it when i got the first call in the morning saying that this equipment is getting giving us some trouble first thing i did is calling the vendor that this equipment is giving trouble in calibration if needed i am going to send this equipment to you now i don't want to hear that this is your weekly off because i am also working despite of having a weekly off on a saturday in from morning 9 am to afternoon 3 pm i made sure that the vendor is available and hence 
as soon as my my equipment was there at my vendor site around 3:30 3:40 pm because it was in the same city immediately the vendor took it for calibration he rechecked the calibration made the equipment right and sent it back again to the uh, test cell center our testing center within an hour around 5:30 in the evening the equipment was there on on the uh, 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 on the corresponding location and the test cell was again uh, uh, started it was up and running and fortunately we could see the right results and the calibration was all okay i am not sure what you are going to take out as a learning from this scenario but i got a lot of learning i was so so proud of myself for taking the right decision for taking the right steps when especially when nobody asked me to do so right i not a single time i had to call my manager to to ask that what needs to be done because come on we come with such a rich experience i am an instrumentation engineer i know what is the importance of calibration that time i i did not have my qualification of operations management with me but even before that i understood how it is going to impact the business it is important to deliver and to tell the intensity of this failure to your subordinates also because there were one or two subordinates who those again they were on leave and they were not answering the call but it is important to tell them also that why it is important and that is responsibility that lies with any manager available in the industry since we could do this entire team work along with our external partners we could deliver the success i'm going to end my session today with this note i hope this entire session was useful for you all i hope the experience that i shared was useful for you all and now let's go to the questions i'm going to see the questions if we have any um, i'm going to try and answer uh, almost all of them say how implementation of uh, ai and iot can improve the supply chain management this is something we covered this is most important to basically establish the communication in the su supply chain and uh, to establish so uh, to reduce the time in communication what is the difference between global supply chain and global value chain oh my god this is very much important question so um, you so there is a material available on that i'll try and share the link there are few links i have included in the presentation but global you can extrapolate whatever we learned just now to the global supply chain because almost everything is the same trust me when you understand the basics of supply chain what is global supply chain is basically uh, supply chain established across the countries right so there is the answer um what is the strategy we have to follow to reach the consumer demand and on which our strategy uh, on which our supply chain management depends for manufacturing process of material so strategy differs from industry to industry strategy is the most important thing that every one must be focused upon and you should know the strategy one because uh the strategy involves what is the probable demand from the market strategy involves that what is the best possible way to produce a material and to deliver a material and that is why uh, and while making strategy the most important thing that we consider is the customer requirement so that's the reason we need strategy what should be our minimum inventory level in terms of percentage yes there are formulas available a very great question a very very good question uh, i'm not sure in like one line i can tell you the calculation because there are formulas available inventory management if you go to any portal uh, depending upon your type of inventory uh, so there so uh, if you see the equilibrium point um the um, order quantity point that i spoke about right so that is the that is one of the technique to uh, understand what percentage of inventory is needed for your own plant definitely if you are very much interested into this particular uh, inventory management topic you should know the calculations there are mathematical uh, mathematical calculations available those are used in the industry if any particular manufacturing unit is not using uh mathematics and the calculation to uh, maintain their inventory then definitely they are going wrong there are going to be losses those are not realized about inventory how much minimum inventory stock again i just answer that question so minimum inventory is something that is the, the, so again minimum order quantity is something that 
you you are very sure about that meeting the change in consumer demands you should be able to meet that change in demands if it is a positive change you should be able to produce high amount if it is a negative change you should be able to control your inventory and store your inventory with effectiveness aisa nahi hona chahiye ki due to negative spike in the demand matlab kuch demand hai nahi we have uh, stocked up some inventory but now the inventory is so much that we need more space to stock up the inventory so this should never happen what is the best way to achieve equilibrium in supply chain management best way to achieve equilibrium in supply chain management is hiring right experts and right resources those have domain knowledge by doing this you will able to achieve equilibrium in the supply chain see technology will be there forever the practices right practices will be there forever but having right knowledge and right resources is very much important because they are going to be the ones who deploy right processes what what innovation you suggest for supply chain management or logistics in covid 19 um, scenario see current innovations so great 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 example right so in logistics i'll tell you first just look at swiggy delivery system swiggy is nothing but logistics that they provide from any restaurant to your home what did they do what innovation did they bring they brought the temperature measurement as soon as i place the order they show me they they message pops up the temperature of a person who is making your food is so and so yeah as soon as my food is ready the another pop up comes up that say that the temperature of person who is delivering whose name is so and so and uh, his body temperature is so and so what right practices he is doing so he is wearing gloves he is wearing mask right so this they mention in the message when your food is delivered they they tell that okay food is delivered and a person who received that food whose body temperature of this much see very intelligent they are not they are not letting their employees life uh, get affected what they do is the delivery person measures the temperature of the person who receives it first they measure the temperature if temperature is beyond limit why to put your own employees also at risk right they are also humans so this is the great great example of innovation in logistics right they they this is some additional comfort service they added in their logistics uh, which gave comfort to the consumer and consumer is very much happy everybody is finding swiggy safe uh, because of all these reasons on a very much logistics part what they did is they the, the restaurants are not open so they modified their they probably reduced their uh, their delivery number of delivery boys those are going they reduced that much percentage the vehicles going in a particular area that is reduced how did they reduce that basis the demand their demand dropped of course before covid 19 during covid 19 and after covid 19 there is going to be huge difference in the demand so accordingly they are reducing their resources they are reducing their uh, vehicles their investments at least they are saving on fuels and all those things right so they are doing all this i hope i answered the question uh, well with the example what is the difference between primary and secondary logistics again so uh, i primarily i take this question as the third party and fourth party logistics which we covered already uh abc analysis of inventory management right so this is something we couldn't cover in detail today but see it this primarily focuses on categorization of your inventory what is a category what is b and what is c this is which you decide ki a category mein kya aata hai maybe expensive maybe the most uh, most expensive inventory it could be most uh, valuable uh, inventory or the raw material needed basis which the categorization done and basis which you decide where to store this inventory what is the care needed to store the inventory what is the cost investment that is needed to store category a category b and category c again a lot in a lot of detail there is already a literature available again this is not a class right where i get to teach you the terms and terminologies you can very well read it or very well you can learn that in a class that or the in the course that is offered by mit but i'm just trying to cover and helping you understand that it inventory management itna important hai ki usme bhi strategies hai so at least you should know this much what type of technology management or software packages are used in the supply chain management um no it is definitely it is it same for all absolutely not software requirements um 
in supply chain management are differ from organization to organization take any example right so erp is needed for any manufacturing industry however erp is not needed in any service industry erp is not probably needed in any hospital industry erp is not needed in any hospitality industry uh, travel and tourism this is altogether a different industry where everything happens on the website where uh, there is a balance of human inter intervention and the technology so supply chain management and the technology or the uh, software uh, that you choose differs from your own type of industry so it is definitely not same for all in terms of packaging requirement i believe this is more focused about the what sort of packaging is needed so yeah it again differs from the type of uh, product that you are trying to deliver and uh, yeah superb so i uh, tried answering a lot many questions for all remaining questions i'll definitely uh, share my answers insights over the email you can reach out to me through email um i just want to wish you all the very very best please make right choices in your career and please make right choices while you are learning something or while you are following a person a, a particular person in the industry i believe in this that if when you follow right people when you look up to right leaders in the industry you get to learn a lot just by observing them just by their style of working so make your choices identify who that one person is who inspires you a lot please do follow that person on a very personal note i just want to end it with a saying that believe in yourself because if you know and if you trust your own capabilities you will go places thank you so much thank you so much everyone